All right, 3 o'clock, nice to have you. Um, Lions, you heard Luke talk about it in the update. I want to bring this up. It's been a largely positive offseason, positive summer. Everyone's excited for the team. But let, let's bring this up because I have a different take but when Luke in the update says the Lions are one of five teams in the NFL looking to trade for a kicker, you're basically saying you hate your kicker's guts. Basically means you don't have a kicker. Yep. And look, Riley Patterson was good last year, 30 out of 35. I, I felt better having him than not this year, right? I think they improved. But – if you're out here, we're talking about making a Super Bowl or we're talking about winning a division. We're talking about, hey, man, we're going to need our kicker. We're going to need some close games here. Is that their fatal flaw or is it what I've been selling, so to speak? Rico, I'm terrified that their wide receiver room is is the flaw that's going to get them. That if it goes sideways, they are one injury away from having a non-functioning wide receiving group. Think about it. I'm on Ross Fabulous. Mm -hmm. And while teams have superstars, right. look, if A.J. Brown gets hurt, they still have Devonta Smith or Dallas Goddard or whatever right. it is. If you go to San Francisco and Debo gets hurt, well, there's Kittle and there's Ayuk and there's McCaffrey. I feel like with the Lions, they are solely dependent on Amon Ross St. Brown. And without him, you have Josh Reynolds. You have Marvin Jones. Right. You have nothing. You have nothing. You may be able to throw Gibbs in there because I think he can catch passes out the backfield. You bring up a valid point, Mike, but I would say I do think that kicker is more important. You're more – okay. Because the kicker, we've reduced to it's a joke position, but if you think about it, on most teams, the kicker scores the most points that year. I'll allow that one. Yeah, I know. I just – it was relevant – Relevant, sustained. It's a, it, no, it, it, it's a stray, but it's apt. So we'll move on from Thank that. you. Yes, we will. But similar to that, if you have a kicker, you have more confidence that when we cross the 35-yard line, we're going to score some points. We're going to put something up on the board, especially in the NFL where every game it seems like it's decided by four points or less. Yeah, look at Moody with, with, with Michigan right. or Justin Tucker with Baltimore. They get to the 40, and they just line up casually for 57 yarders. Now Moody's hurt, but it's why the Niners took him in the third round because, you know what, we need this. This is an important position. If you get the kicker right, you don't have to go out and get another kicker for the next 15 years. It's one of those type of investments. It's like a center or a left tackle. Once you get it right, you're done, and we can move on and get other positions. But yeah, if not, you're going to be going for it a lot because you don't trust that this kicker can make that field goal or make that extra point. So now you have to be a little more risque out on the field. It's a. It's Did a, you just say they have to be risque? Yeah. What? What? How about risky? Risque is something completely different. You got into Harvard. Come on. Let's risque. be let's be better. Risque. No, I mean you're doing a French example. All right, listen. Which are you more concerned with? All right, the fact that you're getting a report a week out from your first game that your team wants to trade for a kicker, or guys, call it what it is, man. JMO's not going to be around, and by the time he gets back to practicing, the idea he's not going to come out in that first week. You're talking week eight or nine before this kid is back. Back. Is it the wide receiving core or is it the kicker? Which is the fatal flaw of this team that could, not will, could bite you in the ass? I think it's kicker. Because wide receivers, Mike, you see wide receivers come from nowhere. That, like, this guy was on the practice squad, and now he's just tearing it up. But for kickers, either you got one or you don't. And if you don't, you're playing catch-up the entire season. I think it's wide receivers. I'm telling you. I'm not I'm not devaluing the kicker. They're both huge problems. I mean, the whole point of the topic is it's not binary. It's not this or that. It, they're both issues right now. I hate hearing Luke's update where it's, yeah, you know what? They're one of five teams in the league that would trade for a kicker. Right. But for wide receiver, look, I like Jared Goff, but Jared Goff needs help. Right. Jared, Jared Goff's not going to make – you know, but, C receivers better or B, like he needs the help. And right now, when we look at it with Damo's injury, with what we know about this suspension, I want him to trade for a receiver. Right, but here's the thing. I want to trade for a kicker. You want the confidence of knowing that, okay, you, you got a fourth, 
fourth quarter, you make this kick, you're in the playoffs, and it's a 51-yard field goal. I love how Rico sets up the penultimate Paul Ettinger suitcase game scenario. Like, could you be more melodramatic about this? No, because this this is a real thing that happens in the NFL all the time where you need this kicker to make this kick. And you know what you need in order to get to that situation? A functioning wide receiving core. If you let me finish, Mike, you'll understand where I'm coming from. Go ahead, teach me. Because at that point, would you rather, if you don't have the kicker, then, yeah, this I'm going to line up and just go for Correct. it. Correct. Because I don't trust the kicker. And that's exactly right. That's what you should do and, by the analytics. No, and, but that's why I'm saying. But if you have the money kicker, man, we got this. Yeah, but line Rico, up, here's, the problem. The field here's your problem. You're not going to find an elite kicker no. at this stage of camp. No, you're not. No one's trading them. So let's say you make a deal and, I, I don't know, pick a lousy team and you go get their kicker. Like, how much of an up? See, here's the problem. You had all offseason to do this. Right. The only thing that you can hope for with the kicker is kind of like, you know, when you get the recycled relief pitcher, but all of a sudden he comes to your team, yeah, and he's really good all of a sudden. Yeah, he's Jason Foley. That's what you're hoping with this kicking situation. See, the receiver angle, I still feel like you're going to see a name get dealt before the season. I, I still feel like you could. I wish they would. I look, Laporta's going to play a lot. Gibbs is going to play a lot. Amon Ra is a monster. But Rico, look at what's around them. Hmm? We're staring down the barrel of Marvin Jones, Josh Reynolds, and nothing. Right, because if you're relying on rookies, you got to remember that rookies are going to hit that rookie wall probably around week 12, 13, where they're right. not going to be as good. There's going to be tape on them, and people are going to learn how to shut them down. Plus, they let a couple receivers go today. Well, it's Trinity Benson. So. But, I mean, RIP. Trinity Benson was a stalwart of this franchise. First impactful move Brad Holmes made. I still don't know that he's a real person. <laughs> like you're right. I don't know that we've actually seen visual evidence of Trinity Benson playing football. He does sound like the name of the person from a movie. It's Trinity Benson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Kenny, both of these are concerns. Yeah, give me back Trinity Benson, you pancake eating. Oh my. Um both are concerns. Both are a problem. Which one's the fatal flaw? I remember it was either the end of last week or early this week. We were talking about spreads in college games and spreads in the NFL. And oftentimes the NFL came down to a field goal. And I think, and I hate using the SOL thing. I'm not going to do it. Oh, no. But I can just imagine marching down the field, needing a field goal late in a game, and then not having picked up a kicker. That's well, that's where my mind immediately goes. But you say pick up a kicker like you're picking up an energy drink. What kicker are we getting? Somebody that can state? reliably make a 40 or longer field goal. Is that not Riley Patterson? I don't know. He missed a 50-some in the preseason. I'm not convinced oh, the guy's no. a great kicker. Okay, so then what are you giving up to get one? And who are you getting? It's a great question, Mike. I don't have that answer. But like, I, who, who exactly is on the block? You can have Trinity season? Benson. Exactly. <laughs> free. <laughs> totally but free. The concern is there. I don't know who we're getting, but the concern is there. I just think that our offense last year was good enough to get you down the field and get you a chance to win. I don't want the kicker to be the reason we don't. What's the fatal flaw, people? Let's have this conversation. I don't like Luke Sloan's update. It upset me. Not because of Luke. Just the contents of it. And then I keep thinking back to when J-Mo got hurt, and I said it. They got to go. Bring, they got to bring in a receiver. And all I've done is get rid of receivers. Which is the more concerning? And, it, and they didn't really go out and draft any. No, no, no. <laughs> so which is the bigger concern? They're both problems. And look, every team in the league has problems. Every one of them. That's how the league works. So there are fatal flaws everywhere. Like if there's a fatal flaw for Rico's team, it's quarterback. If there's a fatal flaw for my Giants, it's next to everything. Like starting two rookie corners. That's a flaw. Let's say actually it's kicker for the Niners. But okay, kicker and your quarterback. You just won't put some respect on that man's name. Talk to me in week eight. Okay. We'll, we'll reconvene at a summit, okay. and I'll talk about Brock Purdy. Brock Two, four, Purdy eight. is back. Brock Purdy sucks. 248-539-9797. We'll get to your phone calls next, 97-1.